Hello and welcome to The Hearing, our music review show here on the channel. I'm John. And I'm Scotto. And without any further ado, on to this week's album, which is from 2008, Final Boss by uh, MC Frontalot. Damien Hess, better known by his stage name MC Frontalot, is an American rapper and web designer. Hess has been releasing music as MC Frontalot since 1999. His first successes came through Songfight, an online songwriting and recording competition where he became known for uh, his consist for consistently beating his opponents. Throughout his history at Songfight, he'd never lost a competition as MC Frontalot. In 2000, Frontalot released the song Nerdcore Hip Hop. Uh, the song became an immediate hit in the geek and nerd communities. Um, the subcore, the subgenre of nerdcore, which had been already been in development by various performers, embraced the title and has since been expanding rapidly. Uh, many consider Hess to be the founder of nerdcore. Um, however, as he points out on the information page on his uh, site, many artists came for, before him who he considers his peers. Since he began selling his albums commercially, um, Hess has collaborated on almost all tracks with Bad Spella, an electronic musician, and hip hop beatsmith and Gabby G minor seven Alter, a composer and keyboardist whose playing was the basis for many of Frenelot's earlier songs. Final Boss is MC Frenelot's third studio album is, and is comprised of mostly, mostly new material, but does include two uh, remakes from before his first album, Nerdcore Rising, Listen Close, and A Very Unlikely Occurrence. The album was released on November 4th, 2008, uh, produced by MC Frenelot, Bad Spella, and Nate Van Ill, and features, and this is quite the list, um, Damien Hess, rapping, lyrics, drum programming, Sean Jordan, vocals, Glenn Phillips, vocals, Jonathan Colton, vocals and guitar, JJ, DJ Snyder, scratching, G minor 7 keyboards, Bad Spella keyboards, drum programming and engineering, Kimmy Gate, Gatewood, vocals, Katrina Diedrichson, vocals, Ray Kamishiro, vocals and translation, The Categorical Imperative, drums, Jesse Dangerously, guest rapper, Word Burglar, guest rapper, um, the Stir Genius, drums, Ray, Fer I didn't practice these names, Ray Ferency, cello, John Nolt, cello, and Nate Van Hill, percussion. Remember, just a reminder, I don't um, add any music into the video for copyright reasons, but down in the description, you'll find links to uh, Final Boss on Bandcamp. We got another Bandcamp one this time, as well as Spotify and YouTube, so you can listen along. On to track one, Wallflowers. Now, I'm sure I've heard that little ascending bit, keyword bit at the beginning of the song, either in a TV commercial or at the beginning of a movie. Yeah, there's stuff that he takes. Um, and I'm, uh, you know, what? I was never got a chance to look up one of them that he did for um, uh, Shame of Otaku, but, uh, but yeah, he'll, he'll take kind of the echo of something else and, and not quite copy mm -hmm. it but you you know what he's going for it's just this little ascending keyboard synthesizer part that sounds like it was in an ad or like it you know in a movie you know movie production company logo or something from the 80s and this is a song about a fictional dance craze and i say fictional because you can't actually do it <laughs> well the be uh, were you talking about the very beginning of the song well like, the song yeah the very very beginning before the drums come in isn't that like the thx that might be it, yeah. <laughs> That's what I think it is. Okay. Um, and and it, it borrows heavily from the Nike slogan, just do it. Yeah. And I love that they reference Margaret Thatcher. In fact, the dance craze is named after Margaret Thatcher. Why is it the Margaret Thatcher? That makes about as much sense as anything else in the song. Okay. <laughs> I was kind of curious. The song is like... meant to make sense, I don't think. In fact, I think it's meant to be completely ridiculous. I remember when she passed. Um, he's, yeah, the, the step one is um, wiggle, wobble, wriggle, point. You know, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's 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 all just, it's word salad, but it's very fun word salad. Frodo Lot has a very unique style, and this great ability to kind of play with rhythms. Um, and you know, at, at one point he goes very old school hip uh, fat boys and does the heavy breathing. Yeah, which was great. Um, like at one point, the lyric is, uh, pretend you got scared and pointed your hair. <laughs> it's, one of the steps, you know? it's just meant to be ridiculous. I um, mean, I, just going from this song, I was thinking it's kind of like a, a Weird Al meets Bloodhound Gang or, oh, um, but yeah. or actually, um, oh, uh, Flight of the Concords. Mm -hmm. 
I especially if you hear like a song like uh, they do called Hip Hop Apotamus, mm. where they <laughs> just well, do like the same kind of thing. When were they around uh, producing this show? That's a good question. Um, man, I seem to remember them back from a long time ago. Because um, this is 2008 and it's his third album. Yeah. You know, he's been at this since 99. Um, and, and I see much more of a They Might Be Giants influence in front of lots. Oh no! I didn't get the. Uh, I didn't get a. They might be giants. Uh, they were from '98. Oh, okay. So they predate him slightly. He's probably probably an influence. Um, yeah. Uh, I I love the line at the end. Um, nothing. Don't don't do anything I wouldn't condone except a dance named after a villainous crone. <laughs> okay, so that explains why why they used Margaret Thatcher. I, I missed that line. <laughs> I should say this is one of my Desert Island discs. It's what's yeah. one of my absolute favorite albums. So I, I'm very familiar with it. It's this is also a case, and I think largely because of my familiarity with it, and because it's a hip hop album, I am going to be commenting a lot on the lyrics version. Well, yeah, lyrics are important. I didn't get to like see them, <laughs> much of them coming mm-hmm. into it though. On to track two, tongue clucking grammarian. I think in this one, this one I recognize. It's a uh, weapon of choice by Fat yeah, Boy yeah, yeah. Slim. Mm-hmm. He's kind of, it's kind of a parody of it, you know? A little bit. It, it, it's got this great kind of 60s groove to it. And it's about correcting grammar. Which is amazing because Weird Al didn't do word crimes until like after this. Mm-hmm. Like until like, I think five years ago, wasn't it? And it starts with this vo- voiceover um, of a guy saying, you know, be, you know, after my 12 years of college, here's some <laughs> advice for the youth of today. <laughs> I really resemble that 12 years ago. Uh, <laughs> and he says, if you write poetry, rip it up and throw it away. <laughs> like, and I get the, 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 the joke. It's because you can't make a living as a poet. Right, right. right. And, and the tut tut in the chorus, or between the verses, rather, really reminds me of Jump Around. I think he was referencing Jump Around. Maybe. You know, jump, jump. And in this case, it's tut tut, you know, tongue clicking or an area. Um, on to track three, um, Shame of the Otaku. This features Rei Kamishiro. Yeah, now, a little I, explanation for those who, who don't know the word. Otaku is commonly understood as Japanese for a geek or a nerd, um, though it's just a little bit different. It, it fo- it's focused more on collectors. Um, um, nice to hear some Japanese vocals. I'm, I'm a J-Rock fan. so. And, and she's a really good singer. She's a beautiful voice. Uh, this one, another. this kind of reminds me of a song Pharrell did. But he did it after this. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think, like I said, he did it probably in the early to mid-teens, uh-huh. if I'm not mistaken. It was that album that had Happy on it and stuff, yeah, okay. which was years after this. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the chorus in the song is in Japanese, um, and it translates, some of it translates to, Outside cars drive, drive by, the sunlight roasts my flesh. Even a bird who ch- chases a rainbow finds itself blindsided by a plane. With the glow of our LCDs, we greet the morning, IRL lacking the sun, we have no need for the sky. And here are the notes I had towards the end of the song. And did he really just use hullabaloo in a lyric? Yes, he did. Am I high? I don't think I'm high. I could have been dosed. (laughs) He actually uses hullabaloo. He references Evil Dead 2 and BBS and Doom. He, in the second verse, he said, when my front, my front a lot was in a boyhood way, and he's talking about when he was young. Well, yeah, he's talking about you know, bringing the girls into his room. Yeah, and making know, them watch Evil Dead 2. Yeah. Um, so basically, it's, it's a comparison between otakus in Japan being looked down on, whereas lately geeks in the U.S. are, you know, looked, kind of, you know, been put on a pedestal. And he's kind of criticizing the media for suddenly capitalizing on these things that he's been interested in all his life. Yeah. I, and I'm totally with them. I'm relieved that Star Wars is losing popularity. <laughs> um, and there's a line, a couple lines toward the end that again I resemble way too much. Um, then wow to, to, to then wow till the morning hour in the dark out of basement out of basement journeys upon which you don't embark. <laughs> I mean I don't play 12, 13 hours a day anymore, but you know it, it's, it's kind of <laughs> it's a nerve. Uh, on to track four, Canada. Uh, this is what I've been talking up. This is I, I've been saying I off air. Just from the title, I'm in for a treat here. <laughs> I, I've been telling you off air that this one is a gift for you. Um, this features Jesse Dangerously and Word Burglar, and it's uh, about being paranoid of Canada. Right. 
this is easily one of the strongest uh, al- songs on the uh, the album. Um, and just taking that brassy O Canada yeah, and then it kind of O Canada, but that's kind of brassy and a little staticky. And the chord changes are actually O Canada as well. In the oh right, right, he, he completely like remixes it. Yeah, and, actually, you know, in the chords too. It's all just the chords uh-huh. of O Canada. Oh yes, <laughs> noticed that very very early on. Yeah. And, and this is a, ca- a case where he sings the chorus, which he does periodically, but this yeah. is the first time on this album. Um, He's kind of singing it in the same style as O Canada. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, the melody is very similar. Yeah, just that whole traditional sound mm-hmm. with hip-hop mixed together is yeah. just really strong. And and two guest rappers on the second and third verse who are both Canadian. Of course, I gathered that. Yeah. So so you know, Fern a singing, rapping in the first verse about how he how he's paranoid of Canada, how it strikes him as unpatriotic. And how you know he's worried about terrorists, so he goes to the go- grocery co to get the terrorist, you know, kit. <laughs> and then um, Jesse Dangerously and Burberg will come in, and as Canadians, and you know, say you know, we're, um, they're going to make you know, I can't remember the lines, but it's something about making people watch reruns of Amen. <laughs> yeah, something like that. And, and you know, we'll make believe that we don't. We'll let you make believe that we don't put microchips in make believes. Uh, the you know. Uh, he has a point though about being paranoid about them. They do keep their milk in in plastic bags. Mm-hmm. How and can you trust that? The chorus is, "Let me get this straight: provinces, not states." Who's your president? See, that's what I meant. You know, post the border guard, prepare to bombard. I, I um, mean, don't you mean to say to you, "Be our Canada"? It is a complete coincidence, but I would not be lying if I said did not say that. Uh, I had poutine for dinner tonight. <laughs> I should point out to those who are new to the show that Scott is Canadian by marriage. Yes, yes. <laughs> hence the song's a gift. Uh, and hence how I know they keep milk in plastic bags. Mm. What the fuck is up with that? Why would you do that? What? I mean, come on. There's no other liquid you'd put in a plastic bag. <laughs> but, but, look, bag, was it, uh, bag in a box. What was the thing in, in the movie theater? Um, bag in a box. Bag. You know, we had we had a lot of the, the the syrup was we got those in bags, right? Yes, right. Yeah. So it is kind of an industrial approach that is often used. Um, but you, it was in a bag, but you would hook it up to something yeah, to, to to dispense pump it, out, yeah. right? This is just oh, we're going to cut the top off and pour it. <laughs> what? That seems Monsters. a little hard to manage. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Did you do that? <laughs> but anyway. And of course, there's references to Tim Hortons at the end, and you know, yeah. And blue money. Oh yeah, that was one of the best parts. You got blue money <laughs> and soup, snow pants, soup. And then just the one of the, the, in the second verse that Dad Front a lot does. Um, I love the line: uh, "The letters O U come out your mouth. Ooh, don't know why, but they do." Because <laughs> they follow the British thing of adding O U. On to track five, and I'm going to group this with track six because they run together. Track five is called the AM Radio Skit, featuring Schaefer the Dark Lord, another um, nerdcore rapper. And it's a comedy sketch about cons- a conspiracy-, conspiracy theorist radio show and that starts off with a discussion of file cabinets and how many you need. They're off air, and they're just, right. the host and the guest are just talking about their file cabinets. And, and for Noah, uh refers to uh, Schaefer's character as a paralogician. Love that one. A paralogician. So kind of like paranormal. Oh, paralogic. paralogic. Okay. Um, and this is really just a, a, a setup for the next song. But uh, oh, he and uh, Schaefer, in in reference to the next song, refers to scaregoat related disinfo hypnology. Uh, <laughs> Loved all of the, the kind of parody of the uh, the conspiracy theorists there. Uh, with scaregoat. Is he from your area? Is he from New Jersey? I don't. Well, he's from New York, I think. Um, okay. Or North Jersey, perhaps. Um, he lives in New York. He's got a New Jersey Devil reference. He's got mm-hmm. a Squonk reference. On to track six, <laughs> Scaregoat, featuring Glenn Phillips um, from Toad the Wet's Pocket. I thought who that was. That's who the singer is. Um, this is one of my. This is probably my favorite on the album. Um, I'm not a big Toad fan, but I've always liked Glenn Phillips' voice, so it was nice to see to hear him on a more interesting song. Yeah. Um, and it's about cryptids being, you know, basically cri- every, every sort of cryptid being real. The more absurd, the better. Um, but not fainting goats who are, in fact, real. 
Um, it's, it's this phenomenon Mythbusters covered it. There's this species of goat who, as a fight or flight, as a flea response, they, they stiffen their limbs, which causes them to fall over. <laughs> That's um, not a good defense. No, I, I have no idea how it evolved, right. but it's, it's, it's legit. I mean, is um, just the playing dead thing, you know? Perhaps. Maybe that's it. Um, it would work on some people. And, Other people and, would be like, cool, I don't have to kill it. <laughs> and and Frontal Lot's character in the song is a teacher of this class on cryptids. Explaining how, you know, all of these bizarre cryptids are real. And, you know, and we don't even talk about um, the Loch Ness Monster because there's too much documentation. You know, <laughs> I wrote my thesis on it. But the, these feigning goats can't be real. Um, references the web of a Nancy, which I thought was a nice touch. Web of a Nancy, and I loved um, the little Bo Peep gag of the yeah. lines. Right? You know, if she lived up in the meadow, wasn't that genteel? <laughs> <laughs> if she, you know, if she had been real, she would have been attendant to the scaregoat. On to track seven, diseases of yore. This features Jonathan Colton, and Joko had to have written the chorus because it sounds just like him. He sings it; it sounds just like his music. This is about old diseases, and it lists every so many. Just it's really just a list of old diseases. Yeah. Um, love the line in the chorus because you're probably fine. Maybe you should pretend to forget to remember the bullet that's meant for you till it's overdue and it runs you through. Right. I was thinking these are the lyrics are a lot different on this one than the rest of the album. They do it does stand out from the he, others. He just you know, talked about you know diseases that have gone extinct, and and the chorus is you know. Um, Maybe you're going to live forever, <laughs> you know, because all of these diseases have gone extinct. There's a really nice kind of smooth jazz keyboard break in the middle of the song. It's kind of saying that, you know, you could have died from so many other things, but you're still going to mm -hmm. die from something anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bullet with your name on it. <laughs> on to track eight, Black Box. This features random. And, um, hmm. <laughs> I, I'm not sure exactly what he's getting at here. Okay, I had to read the lyrics to really get the point of this song. Because in the first verse, Fernalot plays this politician who's swindling voters. Yeah. And in the second verse, uh, Random comes in as a disenfranchised, yeah, disenfranchised ex-voter. And then, you know, cause, so it kind of sounds like he's talking, you know, saying voting is useless. Yeah. Third verse, which is what I had to read, Fernalot comes back as the politician who's terrified of voters. Right, and, and you know they, they've be, they've gotten wind of what we're doing. They're going to vote us out. So it's, yeah. it's pro vote, basically. Um, it's it's um, yeah, it's about the importance of voting. Um, and um, and it's got a very dark sound too. It's musically, it's a lot darker than a lot of the rest of the album. Right, I was like, this is all fun and games in '08, <laughs> but not so much in '17, '18. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it's got some really interesting percussion in addition to the drum machine that just gives it this kind of, um, I don't know how to describe it, just kind of a very intense feel. Yeah. On to track nine, a very unlikely occurrence. This is one of his older songs that he resurrected. It's just under a minute long. Yeah, there were some things that were just a little too short and some things that might have been a little too long. But, yeah, this one just kind of came and went. Really nice groove. Uh, it's a bit cabaret. Yeah, and it's about winning at a very low percentage uh, slot machine. It, it, that's all it's about, it, and it's it, the chorus. It, it kind of has a chorus. It's in the middle, um, and then you get that slot machine sound yeah. when he actually. Goes, all right, that it's a very that. unusual song. On to track ten in arrear in arrears. Another one of my favorites. I like this one a lot. Yeah, this one is about staying up all night working on a creative project, <laughs> which is another thing that I, I resemble. Yes. <laughs> I think most a, a lot of people have done that at least at yeah, one point yeah. in their life, right? Well, because nobody's up in the middle of the night, so you can think. Oh, it's it's kind of along the lines of my. I, I refer to the bathroom as the room of good ideas, <laughs> because that's where my brain does its best thinking creatively, anyway. And I think it's similar to the, to at night. So you, there are no distractions, you know. In the, in the bathroom, there's no. I don't. I don't have a computer in front of me you know, to distract me so my brain can work the problem. And up all night, you know, when I'm up in the middle of the night, there's nobody talking, and, you know, there's nobody distracting me. And so it's the I whole can... point that you're up, you know? It's it's mm -hmm. not like the beginning of the day where there's things to do and stuff to get done out of the way. I mean, it's just, this is your your focus is yeah. what you're, you're exactly. up for. Exactly. 
Um, Man, it's and, been so long since I've been able to do something like that. <laughs> and the song is about doing that and, and ending up with sleep deprivation because of it. <laughs> and the whole, yeah, crazy echo <laughs> effect. Yeah. I love the stereo chorus on, on the panning on the chorus. <laughs> and the chorus kind of fades toward the end. There's a lot of audio tricks that he plays to kind of get you in that mindset of I've been awake too, awake too long and my brain doesn't work anymore. <laughs> I love the way he plays with the rhyme uh, inner ear and inner ears. You know, right. <laughs> turn around, what does it do to your inner ear? Um, your account is overdue, your inner ears. Nice little rhyme there. Um, which is a song I can very definitely relate to. On to track 11, Listen Close. This is another odd one. Yeah. It's easily that's... the slowest song, and it's a very slow rap, too. And this is another example of um, Fernando Lott's ability to really play with a rhythm and, and a groove. With his rapping, um, it, for some reason, it feels kind of Western to me. It's yeah, there's not much to get out of it, you know. Well, and it's the lyrics are a little unusual. It's either about losing your mind or your hair, and it kind of feels like a boast rap at some points. <laughs> um, love the snare sound and this sort of descending percussion in the second verse. Um, but there's yeah, it's it's it doesn't really have a point to it, and I can decipher <laughs> at least. Yeah. Um, which might be why it's one again, and, you know, it's, it's it's one of the odd ones out like in a very unlikely occurrence. His old, both of his older songs don't really kind of fit. On to track twelve. This is another sketch. Um, Will uh, Wheaton, right? A sketch about vocations featuring Will Wheaton. He just uh, appears everywhere, doesn't he? And it's about um, Fernalot and Will Wheaton discussing switching careers. <laughs> um, Will Wheaton's going to become a, a shellfish hip hop rapper. Shellcore. Shellcore. Um, and the rapping was just cringy and hilarious. Yeah. And and Fernalot's going to start writing a blog about, you know, living with his, you know, adult son and his career, you know, his, his former career as an actor. Um, loved the parade and circus magazine references. <laughs> as again, an old school paramedal fan, loved those. Um, and, and the reference to Rear Your Brains, that's a Jonathan Colton song. That's what they were talking about. Okay. So, aren't you the guy who sings Rear Your Brains? <laughs> was, that's a joke I reference. Um, on to track 13, so- Socks On. This features Socks Katrina, on. Katrina Diedrichson. Um, I think if you'd had more time with the lyrics, you would appreciate this one. All right. It's a tribute to Dr. Seuss. Oh, Okay. The chorus is directly from Fox and Socks. Um, here's a new <laughs> trick, Mr. Knox, um, Chicks and Socks, Socks on Chicks, or something of that nature. Um, really, really interesting keyboard part, and it's just a bunch of Dr. Seuss references. And back in the day, you back back in high school, I think you would start you would try to start a religion about Dr. Seuss. I did something like that. So I figured, yeah, with the lyrics, you might have appreciated this one more. I don't know if everybody knows that, though. <laughs> Even the, from that high school, though, that was oh. me. <laughs> it was a pretty good, well-kept secret, actually. Uh-huh. On to track 14, the title track, Final Boss. This is very simply about video games. Yeah. And beating the final boss. Starts with this really nice Middle Eastern intro. Um, some kind of stringed instrument. And there's this kind of an unsettling effect on the voice in the chorus. I think yeah. it's for a lot because there's no, any, no other credits on it. I mean, um, I I liked it the first time I heard it, but after a few listens, it just got annoying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, that voice is a little off-putting. Um, yeah, and you hear it so yeah. much too. Nice piano part, some nice scratching at the end. Um, and I mean, I, I don't have a thing against repetition, you know, because mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you stuff's... you you picked Ted Leo. <laughs> And then, I mean, Serengeti does a lot of repetition, okay. too. But, uh, I mean, there's repetition, and then yeah. there's, and you know. this is probably, well, this or, well, I would say this is probably the weak spot of the album for me. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's definitely the weakest track, which is odd, because it's the... The final track in the, in the title the track. Final track, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, would you but, recommend it? The really weird thing was, though, the first time I listened to it, I liked it. I was oh, on yeah. it. It's got and a then, really interesting groove, and in that that yeah, it's just it doesn't stand up to multiple. And listens. then I think when I was into my my third or fourth listen, I was like, I I could live without this. <laughs> as much as I, as much as I love the album, I do tend to skip this one. Yeah, 
but yeah, I would definitely recommend this. Uh, I I really like. I, I mean, I was expecting, you know, like Weird Al and the Bloodhound Gang at the beginning <laughs> makes you expect something a lot more obvious and a lot more. And, and this has but so much more subtlety to it. There's a lot more layer, layers to him and you know. stuff that I mean, the parody like disappeared somewhere in like mm-hmm. the four after the fourth track. I would say he does a lot of comedic stuff, but it's not all of he does. Like the first four tracks, I felt they were almost parodies, almost mm-hmm. parodies. Where he's taking like the echo of the music. There's like that uh, man, that jazzy '60s thing that that he does in in Shame of Otaku right. that I, for the life of me, cannot pick up. You know what? I'll find the link later and, and uh-huh. share it. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, then after Canada, it's all original. After that, well, it, and it's less comedic after that. Yeah, I mean, so like the AM radio skit was well, so uh, except right for the up. comedy sketches, of course. Um, I just like the AM radio sketch because it just sticks it to the conspiracy theorists, and I kind of <laughs> conspiracy theorists. I, I I really hate conspiracy theorists, so I, I just got a kick out of that. That's true. Years ago, probably back then, I would thought, well, that's ridiculous. Who doesn't think that? But now it's kind of like, oh, well, yeah, yeah. I guess that's needed. <laughs> and ten years ago, he was doing this. So. Yeah, yeah. And of course, it's one of my Desert Island Discs, one of my absolute favorite albums. Um, so, of course, I recommend it. This is the fourth Desert Island Disc of mine that we've reviewed. So um, you'd have this? This, Jonathan Colton, Marion Call, and Bandmade so far. Um, and you were, you, uh, just a little, you know, how the, how the sausage is made. You said you're reluctant to put to review yours. You know, it's hard to pick. You know, oh yeah, picking your desert island discs is tricky. Um, yeah, I don't know. I had to go to eleven. I had to cheat. <laughs> Couldn't narrow it down. <laughs> and and the band and it's it was originally just bring it bandmates' previous album. They released World Domination. That goes on there. Um, thankfully, um, Marion Call hasn't released a new album yet since Standing Stones. And Jonathan, <laughs> I wasn't that impressed with Jonathan Colton's last album. So. Um. Anyway, that's it for Final Boss by MC Frontalot. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't. Until next week, when we'll be reviewing Soft Bulletin by the Flaming Lips. Oh, I you- kept wondering if I should pull and do uh, At War with the Mystics instead. Well, it's up to you. If you want to change it, we can. Oh, I back and forth between the two. I, I really love both of those. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it, think about it over the week. It, we'll announce it if we change it. Let's do it. War with the Mystics. Okay, it'll be at War with the Mystics by um, uh, Flaming Ups. You know the thing with the soft bulletin. There's a track. One of my favorite tracks is no longer on the album, or it was they, only they changed it after the album was released. I, or at least I think maybe the version I was listening to was a UK version originally. Oh, okay, maybe. Um, because I think there might have been some copyright infringement in there. <laughs> Uh, they instead of saying the Thanksgiving parade, they say the Macy's Day parade, which is really odd choice of words lyrically. But you know, it's Wayne Coyne, yeah. and um, maybe because of that, they couldn't use it. I'm not Possibly, sure. Maybe a legal issue there. I'm kind, I'm I'm looking forward to this because um, Flaming Lips for me has always been kind of a case, a similar case to uh, Saint Vincent before we reviewed, um, yeah, actor. Where I heard a song here and there, and it was fine. It was okay, but it wasn't really my thing. They are not a consistent band. And, and then we were the actor, and I fell in love with St. Vincent's music. I'm kind of hoping that happens here. But They, they have peaks and valleys. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think they're working their way up to a peak currently. Currently, okay. they're kind of working their way out of a valley. So they're the Mets of bands. They may be, yes. They they are very, very inconsistent. <laughs> so this will be interesting. Until then, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you, there you are. are.